Rigor demonstrates your vigor. That is the topic of today's video. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process on my website, which is collegemeister.com. The word rigor is in reference to the difficulty of your high school curriculum. And if you are aiming for admission into a highly selective American college or university, one of the first things that that American college or university is going to be assessing when reviewing your application come your 12th grade year is what is the rigor of your current 12th grade curriculum, but what was the rigor of your 9th grade curriculum, your 10th grade curriculum, and your 11th grade curriculum as well? And this is so foundationally important to a highly selective college or university that prides itself on accepting only the best and brightest students because those colleges and universities very much want to be sure that you as a first year college student at their institution are going to be able to succeed right off the bat and that you are going to be not in a position where you will crumble under the pressure of the academic expectations of that particular college or university. So recently I have uh, released my Are You On Track for Selective College Admission assessment, which you can find online and complete for free at areyouontracktogetin.com. And the first question on that assessment basically is asking about this very topic. Uh, it, it, it is phrased along the lines of, are you enrolled in the most challenging courses you can succeed in academically? And I asked that question first on that assessment because the answer to that question, just like this whole discussion so far in this video, is foundational to your chances of getting in. If you are not able to demonstrate to colleges and universities that you are applying to that you've been taking the most rigorous curriculum available to you and succeeding in it academically, then you are going to be at a deficit compared to potentially other students at your high school who have done that, or also against a lot of students around the world who are similarly applying the same year you are, but who are maybe taking more rigorous courses and or doing better in those courses. And so your MO, when you think about scheduling or not just scheduling, but actually enrolling in particular courses every year in high school needs to be, how can I build a schedule that will allow me to be as challenged as humanly possible while also allowing me to have the best shot of succeeding academically. And that is an interesting uh, balancing act because ultimately many, many students opt for getting as many A's as possible rather than being in the most rigorous curriculum as possible because they're addicted to A's and their parents really like when they get the A's. And so they've maybe got an A's their whole life and now that high school has different course options, they would rather just keep getting A's so they, could, they prefer to stay in courses that they're more likely to get A's in as opposed to stretching outside of their comfort zone where they could actually start maybe getting lower A's or maybe even high B's or maybe even low B's. But I'm here to tell you today that succeeding academically, particularly in ninth grade year, includes B's and A's. Now, I'm not going to tell you that you should aim for straight B's. You should not. You should, you should aim for straight A's in your academic courses. When I talk about academic courses, I'm talking about English, math, science, history slash social science, and also a foreign language. But one or two Bs throughout high school is not typically a death knell to your application for selective college or university admission in the United States, particularly if those Bs occur in ninth grade. And so, or maybe 10th grade. Uh, and ideally, if they occur in highly rigorous courses. If you can hold your own, in highly rigorous courses, you are going to be demonstrating to colleges and universities you apply to, whether they're all highly selective or even some 
that are not selective, that you are a big boy or girl. You can do this. You are academically impressive. And a B in a highly rigorous course is far more attractive to a selective college or university than an A in a course that is a standard or sort of easier version of a course that's offered at your school. So why I really recommend you throw yourself into the world of rigor as early as you can in high school is because the sooner you can rise to the occasion in rigorous courses, yeah, you may get a couple Bs along the way, but you will be like a well-oiled machine, ideally by the end of ninth grade and ready to hit it out of the park in 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade because you've thrown yourself into that vat of boiling water and you can hang in that hot water. You can hang there. Whereas if you play it safe and you just go into sort of tepid or cool water in your ninth grade year because, you know, it's not scoldingly hot. Uh, now, this is not, by a, by the way, any analogy on doing this physically to yourself. Don't, don't, I'm not in any way advocating for scolding yourself with water. So please do not, do not get it twisted, as they say. But I'm using an analogy here. That's what they used to do a lot on the SAT. They had analogies, but they got rid of that. So I have to explain this for the younger crowd because many students in ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade don't even know what analogy is anymore. And if that's the case for you, probably you're not a great candidate for admission to a highly selective college or university anyway. But in any case, let's just say you don't know what it is. What I'm basically doing here is I'm playing word games. I'm sort of explaining metaphorically another big word that many people don't know that you, you want to challenge yourself. You know, I could I could even do it the other way. I could basically say some people like to take cold plunges, right? You know, they like to take a, like a ice bath because they they hear that it helps their body rejuvenate or whatever it might be. And other people do not like to do that because why would someone put themselves in an uncomfortable situation? But what I'm basically advocating for here, if we get off the water analogy, is put yourself in an uncomfortable situation in ninth grade. Push yourself to be in the most academically challenging courses you can possibly be in because you very well could rise to the occasion. And if you do, you will be so well positioned to take advantage of more rigorous courses, uh, 10th grade year, 11th grade year, and 12th grade year. And this will demonstrate to colleges your academic vigor, not just the fact that you were in rigorous courses and got A's, hopefully mostly A's, maybe a couple B's in them, but that you were a healthy, vigorous academic uh, entity that is going to be applying to them ultimately in your 12th grade year. And colleges at the highly selected le- level really want highly academically vigorous students. All right. So please do not discount the importance of rigor in your curriculum. Rigor, particularly in your underclassmen year, sets you up for so many more course options by your 11th grade and 12th grade year. Whereas if you play it safe in ninth grade, oftentimes the school rules at your school prohibit you from even considering taking certain courses. Uh, those doors slam in your face in many cases because you weren't in the prerequisite courses necessary to take advantage of more rigorous courses by 11th grade or 12th grade. And that's a situation in which you put an artificial ceiling on your college admissions potential. And even if you are getting straight A's at that point, you realistically may have a very low shot of getting into a highly selective college or university because those colleges and universities are not just highly attracted to straight A students. They're highly attracted to straight A students in the most rigorous courses available in their given high schools. And you want to start off high school right so you will be able to take advantage of as much rigor as possible and earn A's in those courses throughout your high school year. B does not mean bad. Do not avoid a B like the plague because... Oftentimes, you need to get a B in order to put yourself into a more rigorous academic track in a particular discipline area. area. So like maybe it'd be math or English. Like you need to get in the more honors-oriented math class or the pre-AP or the AP math class in order to continue moving on in that AP track. And if you never get into the AP track, you'll never be in the most rigorous math curriculum by 11th and or 12th grade, in which case you've, again, really limited yourself in terms of your ability to... Uh, get into colleges that are considered highly selective in the United States of America. So again, as a big plug, if you are interested in learning more about the criteria that I think are so fundamentally important for keeping you on track uh, 
throughout your high school experience for giving yourself the best shot, no guarantees, of course, but the best shot of getting into a selective college or university, you want to head on over to areyouontracktogetin.com where you can take my Are You On Track for Selective College Admission assessment. Even if you're a parent, you can go over there and take it sort of on behalf of your student uh, because you know your student probably well, your child well, and you can probably answer it honestly and get a uh, results package email to you. Again, this is entirely free and it's entirely valuable for those individuals who are curious about if they are even in the realm of possibility capable of uh, securing admission to a highly selective college or university. Uh, and also, if you are a very fastidious individual and you want to make sure you are dotting your I's and crossing your T's, this assessment, just by completing it, you're going to have the, the gears of your brain spinning about what it is that colleges really value when they assess students' application. And uh, the results, of course, will also further clarify for you what I think you need to be doing uh, over the, the coming days and or weeks to put yourself in the best position to make the most of the remainder of the time you have in high school or the remainder of the time your student has in high school in order to either maximize your chances if you're already on track or get on track if you are highly off track for getting into a highly selective college or university in the United States of America. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my channel. As I mentioned in the beginning, if you are interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process, please consider going to my website, which is collegemeister.com. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, stay stress-free throughout the entire college admissions process.